diverting my attention from all the cricketing crisis that is going through. In 2011, you were the chairman of the selection committee. You selected a pool of 30 players to take part in the 2011 World Cup. And uh, in the, from the final squad, you omitted Chamindavas and Sana Jayasurya. Uh, how tough of a decision was that to make, uh, being a teammate? Well, uh, the thing is that uh, when, when you are a selector, you can't think of uh, any favorism or uh, see, you have got to do things uh, with a clear conscience. So, uh, so at the time, I felt that uh, we picked the right combination and the players in form. Uh, <clears throat> um, unfortunately, um, we played a two local tournament and Sanat until the last minute we wanted to see his performance, but uh, didn't come through. So the day. Uh, we selected the final uh, squad, um, we had to leave him out. What was the conversation with Sana Jayasuri and Chavindavas? Uh, well, uh, see, I, I, I didn't have to really explain anything, so they, they also probably would have known. And they know how I work, so I, it, it really didn't matter, because if they performed, I, I certainly would have included them. It's not because uh, uh, they were my teammates or not really doesn't matter uh, because I, I ultimately uh, picked the best squad uh, along with the other selectors. The best squad we thought uh, uh, was uh, good enough to win the World Cup. In 1995, you were omitted from a tour to Saja due to, I guess, uh, fitness issues and Arjuna Ranatunga did not travel also, so to Muttaya Murlidur and Roshan Mahanama was the captain of that tour. What was the conversation that transpired between you and Arjuna Ranatunga at that point of time? Well, uh, I think it was before 95, I think, if I am not mistaken, must have been somewhere around 93 or so. Uh, but I think uh, Arjuna felt there was some injustice done uh, and uh, he, he really uh, supported me. I, I really appreciate the fact that uh, he did that, uh, stood by uh, a teammate, uh, not because it was me. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Murali, Pramo, uh, uh, and a few other cricketers decided to pull back. But that is not something I would encourage. Uh, I wouldn't have encouraged, uh, but uh, I, in fact, I, I remember telling Arjuna, you all should go, just don't worry about it. But uh, but I think Arjuna said, as a matter of principle, I don't want to uh, go ahead. Uh, so I, I really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the kind of bond uh, we've had uh, right through uh, our cricketing career uh, with, with most of those boys in the 1996 squad. Uh, we played together for over 10 years. And uh, that bond is the one which really uh, made uh, that success possible. If I ask you to name your favourite one day knock, uh, nothing could beat that 107 not out against Australia in the World Cup Finals. Uh, how about uh, your favourite test knock? Well, uh, quite a few. I, I think uh, I got that 167 uh, in sure. Brisbane uh, against Australia because uh, I feel that uh, making runs against uh, uh, Australia in Australia was very tough those days, so to be able to do that and uh, also some of the knocks uh, against Pakistan in Pakistan, uh, I, I rate very highly because um, uh, the kind of uh, bowling attack they had, the kind of wickets uh, uh, and uh, of course we didn't have neutral umpires, so it was uh, quite a, a tough uh, uh, overseas uh, tours uh, we used to face those days. Um, and then, uh, of course, the New Zealand uh, uh, 267, which, is, which was my highest uh, ever test score. Uh, I had the privilege of watching live the 1998 uh, test win against uh, England at the Oval. Murali took 16 wickets, Sanaj Jayasuri scored a double century. And uh, not many people have given the credit uh, on that knock of 152 runs uh, that you scored in that particular match and it was incidentally our first ever victory against England in England. Yeah, How well, was that experience? 
<laughs> well, uh, I shouldn't be getting any credit for the 152 because uh, I think Sanat played a magnificent innings. Uh, uh, and I remember uh, coming um, when we were in the dressing room after England, I think, got about 500 odd. Um, and I was seated next to Kumar Dharmasena. Uh, and I mentioned, uh, I, I, I just uh, jokingly probably, but I thought uh, within myself that that's the only way we could win. Uh, I said, uh, if we are to win, uh, Sanat will have to make a double hundred and I'll have to make a hundred. And um, of course, Murali did the magic of it. We would never have won without Murali. Uh, and uh, to at least try and, because I felt that Sanat had to get a double hundred because of the fact that uh, we had to get runs very quickly. And Sanat was the guy who, who would have been able to do it, not that the others were not capable. Um, and uh, someone, one of us had to support him and get a decent score to build up that partnership which is required. Uh, and ultimately it happened and then I was thinking uh, that that was a kind of strategy which you can use when someone gets a big score uh, in the first innings. Uh, that is something which you can really look for in, in a side uh, when you are playing in the future. So, so we've had so many, so many occasions like that. During one of the felicitation ceremony, Kumar Sangakara at NCC said uh, a story. Uh, you have said, Kaudamalli may Bruce Yardley keep a left arm spinner. And then uh, the first ball that you faced him, you kind of hit that ball 20 rows back. What is this story, this story about, Arvind? <laughs> well, he is a good storyteller. <laughs> Uh, and I think uh, uh, must have been one of the games. Uh, I remember Bruce uh, uh, said there are some very good young spinners, uh, and uh, I think we played at Panadura. Uh, so I probably would have asked him, and uh, he is made the story a little bit more juicy <laughs> by uh, talking about how I made the runs. Uh, I guess uh, whoever the bowler, sometimes I, I don't really worry about names. I just go out there and uh, play my natural game and that's that's been the hallmark of my way of uh, approaching any situation. At the 1996 Cricket World Cup semi-final, you cut, you pulled, you draw, you flicked, you played all the shots when Sri Lanka were down and out for two wickets. Had you got out at that point of time, people would have leveled criticism against you being an experienced player, played irresponsibly. Uh, and on top of that, rows of 100,000 Indian supporters at the Eden Gardens. What was going through in your mind at that point of time when you walked into bat? Well, not 100,000. There was another 100,000 outside, outside the stadium. Uh, well, when we drove in, we saw the crowd, but uh, once we went in, uh, the story I've been mentioning so many times, a uh, couple of days before that I was not feeling too well and uh, Alex just wanted me to do a light warm-up and go in. So I did a half an hour warm-up and I was thrilled that uh, we lost the toss and uh, they put us into bat because I was fresh in my mind to just go out there and uh, bat, uh, which is my main responsibility. Uh, so when when I I have a tendency of when the openers walk out, that's when I start getting ready because uh, uh, normally uh, by the time they get to the wicket, I probably put on one of my uh, pads uh, I wear at the last minute um, and rest of the stuff I just dress up and wait. Um, so uh, and wait for the first wicket to fall to start wearing my pads. So. I just went, washed my face, came out and I was getting ready um, and then uh, someone tro told me we have lost a wicket so I quickly started wearing my pad uh, and not even before I started uh, putting my first trap, um, the uh, other guy came and said you are in, uh, the next wicket toss has fallen the next ball. So I quickly got ready and I just walked out basically, uh, heard this whole crowd screaming 
uh, and uh, really actually it got my adrenaline pumping and forgot about my sickness and everything. Um, so, I like situations like that and I, I uh, really look forward to a challenge. So, I thought uh, this is a great opportunity and, uh, and I, I like when the opposition attacks me uh, and they had a couple of slips and uh, also they had the quick zone whom I uh, really cherished uh, facing. Uh, and uh, at that moment, uh, I think the only thing I had to do was to take them on and uh, I did that and if I was thinking about um, the criticism and uh, media and all that, uh, I do not think I would have uh, uh, been successful right through my career because uh, that is the thing which I want to try and get across to some of these youngsters also that they should not be worrying too much about media and uh, the impression which is being created about them in the public because what matters is what is inside you and uh, uh, so you have to be yourself and uh, that they have to feel confident being themselves and go out and do what is best for them. So, if we play on that sort of uh, mentality. I, I feel uh, there is there's a lot of talent which we can harness out of these youngsters because uh, they can come out and do a lot more. They have a lot more natural talent which, which they can display uh, without fear. So, the fear factor has to be taken out of the system and uh, that is I think the management's duty. So, so we look forward to doing that. What was going through in your mind in that final when you chased that 240 out runs, when you scored that 100? It was a chanceless innings. Well, there was one chance, I think I, there was an inside edge which was a tough one of Warney, but apart from that, uh, it was uh, uh, something which uh, kept on biting me was uh, that there, were, there was an opportunity for us to win a test match uh, at SSC and I was too eager to try and win the test. I played a, a rash shot uh, because we had to get some 180 odd runs to win. We were 130 odd for two uh, and I, I was eager to get to the target uh, and I lost my wicket and then we had a huge collapse. We lost that match and uh, that is why I said learning from these mistakes really helps when you are an experienced player playing in important situations. So, that always was in the back of my mind and, and I told myself 241 is a target which, which we can easily achieve if I bat through the innings without taking any risks. So, so that is what I focused on. So, I did not want to take too many risks. I just want to keep hitting the ball along the ground. Uh, and find the gaps uh, and not to panic. Uh, the main main thing is in one day cricket to make sure that you do not panic at any stage and have the confidence that you can even get 20 runs in one over two if you need to win, win a game. So, that capability I knew I had anytime I want to accelerate I can do that. Uh, and of course, I had the support and the batting depth with Arjuna, Roshan, Hashan, all of them to come gave me the confidence to go out there and play my natural game. Uh, so, that uh, that really uh, was the key, uh, but, but all in all I think uh, no one can win a World Cup or a match on their own, but it was an, an amazing uh, team effort uh, from the semi-final, uh, even, even those little, little things where Kalu getting a stumping of Sachin which turned the game around then uh, uh, 12th man Upul Chandana coming and getting a run out, uh, run out and a couple of great stops uh, in the semi-final really put pressure on a, on two batsmen who were set and we got two quick wickets and that really changed the momentum for them. Uh, so, there are, there are little, little areas where these guys chipped in. Vasi coming and getting a useful 30 runs in that semi-final. Um, so, 
uh, Roshan come betting up the order and getting a 50 building a partnership with me so so you can't forget those little little things where I think a lot of the credit has to go to Devi for working with some of those youngsters and giving them the confidence to go out there and play freely uh, and then Alex on the fitness side did an amazing job of course Dulip being there was um, uh, amazing strength because uh, he's a guy who would uh, actually sit next to me in most occasions and uh, just take the pressure off because he would talk to you and joke about a lot of things where you, you become so much more relaxed before going into bat and then uh, we had a lead in Arjuna who uh, also de commanded a lot of respect uh, from the young players and uh, I think all in all it was a team effort and uh, Sanat uh, was amazing right through that tournament uh, from the bowling side from Omurali and Vasi uh, did a great job along with Kumar Dharmasena. So that, that squad uh, and the team, uh, I think it was an amazing team effort. Everyone played for each other, everyone believed in each other's ability uh, and supported each other. I think that was the key uh, to winning that World Cup. It was like uh, God disguised as Arvind De Silva at the 1996 Cricket World Cup final for all of us. We've been cherishing that memory for all the 25 years. Talking about the future prospects of Sri Lanka cricket, who are the players do you think that could take Sri Lanka cricket forward? Well, there's um, actually uh, quite a few youngsters uh, I have seen, uh, but, but I think now uh, there might be a little bit of a Ship Angelo, uh, Tisara, Chandimal, uh, Thiriman, those, those uh, the Mendes, uh, then Kusal Janit, whom I, I feel is an amazing player. Uh, he's got uh, huge potential and, and he's a guy who should be playing all three formats for me. Uh, and he's a guy whom you shouldn't be expecting uh, every day to go out there and make a hundred or a fifty. He, he's not a player who's going to be consistent but he's going to be a match winner for you. Uh, the day he gets going you're going to win a match. So so you you have players like that so you've got to build a team around players like that. He's, he's a carbon copy of Sanat and we need to make use of him. Um, and then uh, you have uh, 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 that De Silva boy uh, uh, Dananjay uh, who, who's got a very good temperament uh, then you've got uh, Dimuth, uh, who's an excellent, uh, solid uh, player up the order. Uh, uh, Mendis, uh, who's technically, uh, maybe, he's got a little bit of uh, doubt uh, uh, outside the off stump. Uh, that's a little uh, technical issue which he needs to sort out and a mental issue. Uh, uh, I think if he sorts that one out, he can be an enormous uh, uh, player for Sri Lanka uh, and uh, on the bowling front we've got uh, some very good spinners um, uh, this Ambul Denia boy looks very very good uh, very good prospect uh, then there's another left armor Hasaranga um, so there are quite a few players and, and I, I see we just need to build identify these players and try and make sure that they carry on and uh, play the period of time which gives them the necessary exposure and the experience. So thank you very much uh, Aravinda for accepting my invitation to feature on this show. One something that was expect that I was expecting for a long long time to have mm -hmm. and I hopefully we should be able to put those plans that you've spoken about uh, in place and this committee will end up in the right side as we try to revive cricket in Sri Lanka. One more time thank you very much. You're welcome.